are called. You are just not anybody. You are a child of God. You are set apart. Men and women of God are not timid. Men and women of God are not weak. Men and women of God are warriors. We are not built to be soft saints. How long are we going to be marshmallow, gummy bear, spineless children of God? There is a very real devil who is described as the adversary who walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I have news for you tonight. Just as the devil desired Peter so that he may sift him as wheat, he desires you and he will do everything in his power, everything in his power to sift everything useful in you and to stop all progress in your life. He wants to stop your walk with God. He doesn't want you to prosper spiritually, physically, mentally, financially or emotionally. Year after year, the same things keep happening to you. You take one step forward and get locked three steps back. And you feel like time is running out. And you feel as if you have missed your season. And your window of opportunity is gradually closing faster and faster as you age. How long until you realize you are not fighting natural things? Nothing just happens. The obstacles you are facing are not by accident. Nothing just happens. Nothing ever seems to work out for you. But for other people it does. Nothing just happens. Those bad breaks, those unfortunate events in your life were not random or because of bad luck. They were set against you. They were calculated moves by the enemy. The spirit world governs the physical world. What this means is that what you see happening in the physical world is a result of what's already happened in the spiritual world. Before anything takes place physically, it's already happened spiritually. Some things you and your family have been fighting against have been sent against you. And if you look carefully, some of the things you were fighting against didn't begin with you. Look back at your family tree and you'll see that the enemy has been attacking your family tree for years. And are you really going to sit there and let the enemy take another year from you? And let him sit on his demonic throne laughing at you, telling you that your mother wasn't nothing, your father wasn't nothing, and I have enjoyed ensuring that you will be nothing. You will never be good enough. You will never be adequate. You will never be free. You are just another cupcake Christian which I have enjoyed devouring. The devil is a liar. Take a stand in the name of Jesus. In 2020, you are going to be bold like a lion. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. The dictionary definition of boldness is not hesitating or fearful in the face of actual or possible danger. Synonyms of this word include brave, fearless, courage. It's time that we as children of God believe in the correct doctrine. We are not children of a weak, timid God. Yes, be humble, but humility is not weakness. Yes, be meek, but meekness is not weakness. Look at Jesus in the God of Gethsemane. According to John 18 verse 3, there was a band of men that came to arrest him in the garden. The Greek word for a band of men is spira. This word describes a military cohort of a number of soldiers between 300 and 600 soldiers. Not just men, but soldiers. And not just any regular soldiers. But these were extremely trained soldiers that were equipped with the finest weaponry of that day. Essentially, they were the special forces of the Roman army. 600 Roman soldiers came for Jesus that night. Jesus asked them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. As soon as he said unto them, I am he. They went back and fell on the ground. Jesus was bold like a lion. And Jesus is the gold standard of Christianity. And if you claim to be a child of God, 
you have to be bold like a lion. And you know what they say about lions. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. For you to become everything God has intended for you to become. To reach the heights God has planned for you. It demands boldness. It demands boldness to be a child of God. It demands boldness to walk by faith and not by sight. To go where you've never walked before. It demands boldness to reach for what you've never reached for before. It demands boldness to win. It demands boldness to break chains. It demands boldness to fight when you're tired. It demands boldness to be above average. It demands boldness to be more than a conqueror. Boldness, boldness, boldness. I don't think you understand me. The door is open to those bold enough to knock. It says in the word of God, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. It demands boldness. 600 of the best soldiers in the world at that time came to Jesus and Jesus stood up to them with no fear and said I am he do you have the boldness to stand in front of whatever enemy you are facing and whatever enemy you may face this year whether the enemy is the devil himself whether it's sin whether it's debt whether it's financial debt whether it's illness whatever you are facing Whatever you will face, stand up to it. Stand up against it. There comes a time when you have to have some aggression, some tenacity, and some might about you. And you have to stand up and fight back, no matter what is happening to you, no matter how hard the fight is. As long as you keep fighting, you will win. The devil only wins if you let him. Life will only win if you let it. Fight on, fight on. Fight on. Don't tell me you can't fight anymore. Don't tell me you can't fight anymore. Don't tell me I'm tired and alone. After all you have been through, you've got to take a stand. You've got to take a stand. Stand in the middle of heartache. Stand in the middle of calamity. Stand in the middle of the storm. Stand in the middle of chaos. Stand in the middle of failure. Stand firm in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, it will not defeat you. If it is an illness, fight back against it. It will not win. It will not win. The devil and his army cannot stop what God has ordained for you in 2020. You will experience the blessings of the Lord this year. The crown of favor is upon your head. God will open doors for you. But your duty, your responsibility is to be bold like a lion. Look at the ones who have gone before you. Moses, described in the Bible as the meekest man ever. Yet Moses had the boldness to go face to face with the most powerful man on earth at that time. And told him, let my people go. Boldness, the great soldier Joshua, who took the sword and led the children of Israel to conquer kingdom after kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. Boldness. King David, who slayed a lion, a bear, and a giant as a small boy. Boldness. You can't be bold if you see yourself as a victim. You can't be bold if you see yourself as a loser. You can't be bold if you see yourself as a coward. This is the year you realize you have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on your side. And he has equipped you, and he has fashioned you, and shaped you to be more than a conqueror. This is the year for you to walk in boldness. God's angels will protect you. His angels will minister to you. They will walk with you. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside you and will guide you. Victory will follow you. The crown of favor is upon your head. God has favored you. God has invested the blood of Jesus in you. You have royal blood running through your veins. This year is the year for you to finally take a stand in the name of Jesus. You are a warrior. You are a child of God. Don't you dare let the devil dictate another year of your life. If the truth were told tonight, every person in this room who's 21 years of age or older has a burden and a heartache. I, could, I know these men on the platform. And I, I promise you, every man I know on this platform, this man right over here, all the way down the line, 
has a reason to have a broken heart tonight. Not only do the adults in this room have broken hearts and burdens, but so do the young people, the teenagers. I went to a high school basketball game. I go to one a year of our high school. A couple of years ago, and I sat behind our, the 12 men on our high school basketball team. And as they were steady sitting there waiting for the game to start and the coach was giving final instructions, I went down the line. The first boy, his mother, dying with cancer. The second boy, his father, given birth or had fathered a child outside of wedlock. The next boy, his mother and dad, had just gotten a divorce. I went right down the line. Every single one of those basketball players had a broken heart that I knew about. Now the honest truth is, if the truth were told tonight, and I'll not ask you to let me know, but the truth were told, I promise you that 95% of all the adults in this room tonight have a reason that you could weep. We laugh a lot, and that's good, we ought to. But I promise you that 95% of the people in this room tonight have a reason they can weep. I have burdens, you have burdens. Mine are perhaps no greater than yours and yours perhaps no greater than mine. But all of us have burdens. Now God tells us what to do when these burdens come. He said when the, the battles come and the problems come and the heartaches come, he said, here's what I want you to do. He said, the first thing I want you to do, I want you to fight. I want you to fight. He said, wrestle. It means fight until you vibrate. I want you to fight. Now you said the day is going to come when you can't fight. He said, then I want you to withstand. Brother, you can take it, just withstand. But he said, the day is going to come when you won't have the strength to withstand. He said, having done all, having wrestled, having withstood, having done all, he said, I want you to stand. But I said, dear God, what does the word stand mean here? May I tell you exactly what it means? It means don't change. Don't change. See, God knew that when the burdens come, we'd be tempted to change. And God knew that. And God knew that with the burdens, the problems, and the heartaches, and the trials, God knew that with that, there'd be a temptation to try something else. And God said, when the battles come, and they will, when the burdens come, and they will, when the heart is broken, and it will, he said, I want you to fight. I want you to fight, 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 he said. He said, when you can't fight anymore, he said, I want you to have the guts and gumption to withstand. But he said, when you can't withstand anymore, he said, I want you, having done all, to stand. 